I am Lieutenant Colonel Alenka Vale. I currently work at Weed Army Community Hospital and I am Army Medicine. My mission is to help the NTC mission, which is to serve our soldiers who come here for training. And, um, and that includes the soldiers and their immediate families that are here. Currently, I am uh, the chief nurse anesthetist at Weed Army Community Hospital. Um, my primary responsibilities include performing anesthesia care, um, along with managing my department of PRNAs here to include more administrative duties such as scheduling um, and uh, hospital meetings to include credentialing, um, code blue committees, things like that nature. Well, the, the main difference between uh, working in the civilian sector as opposed to the army sector is the um, type of people you're dealing with. And um, when you are dealing with the civilian sector, you almost get um, more of a, um, a variety of patients across all spectrums. Whereas in the army, it depends on where you are stationed. Um, if I am stationed at a larger uh, med send, um, I would get that same span of uh, patients uh, to include pediatrics all the way to geriatrics. But here we are limited because our focus is on the NTC mission and so our um, age group is limited to the soldiers and their immediate families and those tend to be on the younger spectrum. Here we deal with a lot of healthy sh soldiers that have trauma. So um, what happens is we stabilize them in the emergency room and because we don't have an ICU here, um, I become a flight nurse. I fly with the patient to their um, whatever accepting facility there is that is able to handle the trauma. So I've, I've done that a number of times since coming here. Um, and that's a little different. Normally you wouldn't expect a civilian CRNA to drop what they're doing and go fly with the patient, right? But that's what we do here. So that, that's a little different, yeah. I don't have to worry about uh, filing for billing. Um, or anything like that. Um, we do record uh, what we do in terms of if we are performing a general anesthetic versus uh, a block or a combination thereof. We do keep track of it in our electronic record, but to say that I personally have to go and submit a billing profile for that, I don't have to do that. Um, I don't have my own LLC, so I fall under the government and that takes care of that portion for me. Uh, I know all of our responsibilities have been stretched and even here within this hospital, we've been um, doing coverage for things that we would no longer, uh, that we normally wouldn't cover pre-COVID days. Uh, we're, we work as a team and if you can't work as a team, then that's where you run into issues. So I, I think that falls on equally on both sides of the spectrum, both civilian and active duty. Some of the perks are, personally, I love to travel. Uh, I don't uh, like to be in a place for a long period of time. I love to get up and go and see different places. So that's one of the perks. The Army provides that for me. Um, and they're able to cover my moves. And that, that's a wonderful perk. Um, and another thing is uh, credentialing um, as a CRNA. Uh, it tends to be more complicated if you go from one civilian job to the next, uh, whereas in the Army it, it's kept track of and it's a, a little bit of an easier process, I would say. So my, my peer group, uh, I had phase two at Fort Hood um, in Texas, and uh, my peer group consisted of uh, retired Lieutenant Colonel Frances Bradley. She just retired last year. And, um, and currently is now also Lieutenant Colonel uh, William Corona. And he's still active duty and he's stationed up in Madigan right now. And um, we keep in touch and we, we text each other. Um, if something happens that is different in our practice, we try to share our resources. Um, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Corona has um, been in larger med sends, whereas I've been in more smaller medacs, so it's nice to compare 
um, the differences between the two and um, the collaboration is nice because uh, a lot of times you, you go to so many places but you realize how small the anesthesia world truly is. Um, I, I have friends all over the world. Uh, I have friends in Hawaii, I have friends at Fort Bragg, um, Madigan, Washington State. Um, uh, the, the Army currently has a program too where they are collaborating with civilians and they're um, having the CRNAs tr um, train and work in uh, civilian practices that are trauma related. So I know there's a couple of uh, hospitals up in the Philadelphia area, and I believe in Oregon, and there might be more, but forgive me, I'm not privy to the exact uh, locations. So I know a few of my colleagues have gone over there as well. And so they, they function as a civilian CRNA, but they still carry um, the, the Army training with them, and they still have to adhere to all the Army um, procedures and documents and everything else has to be kept up Army-wise, but they're just working in a civilian setting. And I believe that is, that is to promote um, more of a collegial relationship, um, especially when we embark on a deployment environment. So it's nice to have a good trauma experience uh, that's not just focused on uh, Army hospitals. Because when you get out on your own, I, I believe the more you see, uh, the more you experience of other people, just because I do it one way, somebody else may do it another, but we may have the same outcome. If we compare our stories, we learn from each other, and um, we're, we're able to give better patient care, and that, that's the bottom line. Whether your patient is a soldier or a regular civilian human being. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I'm not here to sell the army. Um, people have to sell themselves. And I don't mean that in a monetary way. You have to know your own worth. And you have to know what you're comfortable with. And if you are, are comfortable working under the environment of the army, knowing what you're signing up for, and you're all for it, then I would say go for it because it's it's a wonderful experience. Uh, nowhere else uh, would I have been able to, to practice in Iraq or in, in uh, Korea as a, as a regular nurse, civilian nurse anesthetist. And that's not to demean the civilians at all, but you wouldn't have that leverage. And um, that's what the, the Army gives you, that leverage. It, it also, it's, it's not as, uh, constricting um, in terms of practice because this is a great place, Fort Irwin. We, there's a, our department is run and staffed by four CRNAs. We do not have an anesthesiologist working above us, so our practice is independent. Uh, we, we form our own policies in conjunction with DHA now, but um, it's we don't have to answer to anyone as long as our um, practice falls under the AANA guidelines and we adhere to it as such. Personally, I, I was a ICU nurse for 17 years, um, as well as an assistant professor at uh, Texas A&M University. As a civilian, I had practiced the whole gamut of of the nursing spectrum, um, with the exception of labor and delivery and psych, and of course anesthesia. So I came to a point in my life where I, this was the only thing I really, really wanted to do. Um, but the, um, the drawbacks of CRNA education are it's very expensive, and you cannot work when you are in school. Um, and so that's pretty much amounts to, well, 10 years ago was um, a quarter of a million dollars I would have had to spend uh, out of pocket and supported myself through three years of nurse anesthesia school. So the Army was very convenient and uh, having been a contractor uh, for the Army um, at um, Brook Army Medical Center, I, I was somewhat exposed to um, what the Army was capable of in terms of its medicine and our Army nursing as well. In 2008 I was uh, I was working at Texas A&M University. I was an assistant professor, and uh, we would normally have uh, recruiters that would come by 
and wrote ask us if we had any students that were interested in a life in the military. And uh, one, one day the same fellow comes by and um, you know we wave and I go, well, no, I don't have any students, but you may want to come by my office and talk to me. So he um, came and uh, spoke to me. I, I expressed my interest in anesthesia nursing. And he's like, I can get you in, but you're, you're going to have to really, um, really work on your packet to get it in. And I believe he spoke to me in uh, September of 2008. And um, in February 2009, I had uh, finished my GRE, completed my packet, done my assessment, the whole nine yards, and I was commissioned into the Army at that time. I, I know for a fact that um, at Fort Sam Houston in the AMED Center, um, there's been a lot of research done, uh, coagulation studies uh, that I was part of as a student uh, going through anesthesia school. Um, they have since uh, changed and the scope has broadened. Um, there's a lot out there. I'm not privy to what is being submitted for research studies right now. Well, um, my perspective changed. Uh, I'll be honest, when I first came in, I, I, was, uh, I was driven. I was driven to complete the program, and I was driven to complete the obligation, which at that time was six and a half years. And then uh, when I found myself at the eight-year mark, uh, I had deployed, and um, for, for lack of a better phrase, my whole world turned around. And, and it wasn't because the deployment was so harsh, but my life circumstances changed. And um, it gave me a, a new perspective, and that new perspective um, allowed me to uh, kind of take uh, into account what's important to me, what makes me happy, and how can I be a better person? Uh, would I be better if I got out, or would I be better if I stayed in? So I had that conversation with myself, and I decided to stay in. And th that's how, and now it's, I have that conversation every time my contract renews, and so I, I, I self-check myself, and, uh, and I ask myself, is, is this what I still want to be doing? Is this where I belong? And uh, if, if I answer yes to my own questions, then I'll keep on being here. <laughs> my, I know uh, the CRNA profession is very competitive. And uh, if I can offer any words of advice, if you have the desire to go for it, and you have all your credentials are lined up, everything lines up, and the only thing holding you back is, is the fear of change, um, just let that go. Don't let that be a, a stopping point. Um, everyone is limitless. Uh, it's only the limits you place upon yourself that, um, that end up forming what you think is your life. So if you want your life to be different, change your limits. <laughs>